It's working. Hello. Yes, it is. It is. Everyone hear me? Is the mic on? Yes, kind of. Oh, there we go. I hear myself. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session. Um, the title of our session today is Collaboration is the Key to Innovation. And before I dive a little bit deeper into these topics, collaboration and innovation, I'd actually like to get a little bit of a feel for the people here in the room. Do me a favor, um, raise your hand if you are here mostly because you'd love to hear some learnings, best practices about collaborating across affiliates in the Wikimedia movement, and you'd like to be inspired and motivated by those. Go ahead, raise your hand. I see some hands. If you're joining online also, feel free to write in the chat or um, just kind of do this exercise for yourself. Um, I saw some hands there, perfect. Do me a favor, raise your hand if you're here mostly because you want to hear about some failures and you're happy to learn from things that might actually not always go so well in collaborating. Okay, I see one hand, that's very um, honest of you. I appreciate that. And also please raise your hand if you are here mostly because you want to hear more about the innovation part of our session and learn a little bit more about what it is that we're actually doing in our collaboration. Okay, uh oh, a lot of hands here, perfect. Well, you're in luck. Anybody who raised their hand, you're in the right place. We're actually going to touch all of those topics a little bit, even though we won't have time for deep dives today. Um, if you didn't raise your hand, I'm pretty sure we'll still be able to grab your attention at some point, so feel free to stick around. All right, now who are we actually to talk about collaboration? Let me introduce us. I am Lucia. I am from the innovation team at Wikimedia Deutschland, so Germany. And um, we initiated this collaboration earlier this year. And I'm very happy to be joined by my wonderful collab partners. Over here to the left, we have Angie from a chapter, Wikimedia Argentina. Over here, we have Anthony from a user group, namely Tanzania. Carol is joining us from the Wikimedia user group in Kenya. And Ivan on the far right. Oh, you're getting a lot of applause. Wonderful. <laughs> Popular here. <laughs> yes. And Ivana is joining us from the chapter of Wikimedia Serbia. Now, um, I do want to mention that we have a few colleagues that um, are also part of this collaboration that couldn't make it to the stage today. Um, you can see on our slide um, this little world map where we're all, all um, coming from. Uh, six different affiliates collaborating across different cultures and time zones. I especially want to mention Devlis from the Wikimedia user group uh, Uganda, which is also a part of this collaboration. So we're six affiliates in total coming together. What are we actually doing? We uh, got together at the start of the year. We call ourselves the Innovation Lab, the InnoLab for short. And our intention is to build a new innovation program, so a program that will um, help us in the movement to strengthen our innovative capacity. So we believe that there are a lot of wonderful ideas out there in our movement for new tools, products, services, projects around free knowledge, but that maybe um, we could use some more spaces where we can experiment with these ideas be a little more creative, bold, explorative um, with developing new ideas for free knowledge. Um, what we have done mostly so far is done a lot of research to better understand what are the needs in our movement to actually build such an innov innovation format, as well as developed some initial concepts um, on what this innovation format might look like in the future. Now today, we want to talk a little bit about um, our collaboration, how this has been going, and also dive a little bit into those initial ideas that we have developed as a collaboration. Um, and with that, I'm actually gonna pass over to Ivana for a first insight into how this collaboration has been going so far. Thank you, Lucia. And thank you all for having us here um, to share some of the insights and some of the lessons learned. 
Um, I'm, in this part, I'm going to talk about um, one of the outcomes we want to have uh, at the end of this collaboration and hopefully not the final end. Um, uh, so we wanted to develop the collabora collaboration uh, playbook. Um, this is something that can be used for us, for our future work, but also for the communities um, in the movement. Uh, playbook is actually created and it, it is consisted um, out of the inputs of our partners. And we wanted to show the answers um, that we want, uh, the, the answer that we are searching, but also um, some of the uh, the things that we find out as the biggest resources, the biggest setbacks maybe, what things should we avoid. Um, and all, uh, I would mention that this is not final. Uh, as Lucia mentioned, uh, we already done a lot of research, a lot of brainstorming, but we are thinking about adding a lot of content there uh, because we are expecting a lot of hopefully success, successful stories, but also lessons learned in the future. So here we are, and sorry for the heavy text uh, slides, but I wanted to, for you to have the glance of the playbook. So um, uh, these are our partners, these are their insights. Uh, when we are collaborating together, we are actually thinking bigger and broader. And uh, while working together and working towards the same goals, uh, we are uh, trying to create a better, better impact. Uh, in order to do this, we need trust. Uh, trust is something that is actually uh, creating our conf uh, confidence to work to the fullest, uh, uh, to, uh, to put our abil abilities out there and to uh, work together towards the same ideas. Um, before we start the collaboration, we definitely need to set some clear expectations. What do we want to uh, uh, work to, what do we want to uh, achieve here, what are uh, our roles and responsibilities. So creating this setup uh, in the beginning is the most important part of our, um, of our, of our collaboration. So um, I think that because of this diverse team of ours, um, the greatest resources here is the diverse perspectives, uh, the diverse uh, views, insights, and learnings from all of the uh, commu uh, team members. Uh, so I think that we can use this because we are from the different continents, different cultures with different backgrounds, uh, and to use this to achieve better impact. And this is not just for our team, our project. Uh, this goes beyond us. Uh, our idea is to involve uh, movement, uh, involve different stakeholders from the movement. So we wanted to uh, involve people who are working with innovation projects, who who are maybe not working at this point, but maybe they are planning to work uh, with innovation uh, projects and they need some resources or tools or they want to work with us um, on that. Um, there are, of course, in every project, there are challenges, there are setbacks. And uh, what we face the, more, uh, the most is because we are a team from different user groups and different affiliates. Uh, we are, of course, a uh, team with different in different development stages, meaning that we have um, different resources. And I think that the main setback here was that we uh, did have limited resources in, times of, in terms of time and human resources. Um, that's why we uh, had a lot of um, time on brainstorming and organizing and planning um, and we wanted to work more on uh, concrete prototypes so we are going to do that in the following months but of course um, this was one of the setbacks that we want to go through. Uh, maybe uh, it's not so popular to share our biggest fail, um, but it is important, of course. Uh, because of the limited resources, we wanted to apply with the proposal, and we did that uh, within the Movement Strategy Implementation Grants. And because this, is, this was our second time, we, want, uh, we wanted this to go as smooth as it can, but it was prolonged a little bit, which... Um, which actually affected on the kick of the, of the collaboration and also the more time for the realization and development of the prototypes. And maybe something that we are uh, a little bit scared of is that 
uh, are we going to create the right prototypes for the innovation projects? Um, are we going to uh, really respond to the right needs uh, in the movement in different communities? So um, that's why we are asking you to join us, to communicate with us and uh, to go through the steps of our collaboration and be a part of it. Um, feel free to uh, ask questions now during this panel. We will leave some time for that or maybe uh, approach us later this day or after that um, on, within the online communication channels. And uh, without further ado, this is, um, this is something how we're going to work like in, on this playbook. But right now I want to uh, go to, right to the panel discussion and start with uh, providing some insight from the partners. Yes, thank you. Um, I'd like to kick us off on this panel discussion, because Anthony, I have a question for you. I'd be interested to hear what are your core learnings um, from this chapter as well as user group setup of this size? Thank you so much, Lucia. Uh, I think this cross affiliate setup uh, is a good environment for innovation because uh, it involves people from different diversity and geographically we're coming from different areas uh, that helps also to have some different experience. Number two, I think uh, the networking and the team working was a key factor that led us to even come to this point. And I think also this is a setup that uh, is very good for sharing experience because we come from different areas and we have different experience within the movement. And I think another thing um, is that uh, this is uh, a setup that we, we are looking within the foundation of the movement, which I think maybe if it's scalable, if we test and do something that are productive, it's a good scalable thing. Thank you. So I'll be now asking uh, Carol. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what, what are the key factors that uh, you have learned through this close affiliate uh, uh, collaboration? Oh, well, I think my, uh, the biggest, um, most crucial for, to sustain the successful cross collaboration, one of them is uh, setting clear objectives and establishing goals to ensure that all parties uh, are reading from the same page. And another thing I think is strong communication, how we pass information, how we have a common an example emailing list that we are all able to communicate and uh, also mutual benefits all involved parties should have tangible benefits from the collaborations and another thing i think uh, is trust and relationship building which i think we have done so far so good with <laughs> amongst our teams from across the globe and also uh, shared values and common vision to provide a foundation of collaboration. And our flexibility, which we have tried to really achieve uh, as a team uh, from uh, different time zones across the, the globe. And yeah, I think that is what so far we've been doing. And uh, I have a question to Ivana. Uh, what has been your biggest, I know this is not the best question, <laughs> your biggest frustrations so far? So yeah, the toughest questions here. <laughs> um, so it's always, it's, as I said, it's not so popular to talk about some frustrations or challenges we had. Um, but what I think it's, it was maybe the, the thing that we uh, involve, invest uh, a lot of time in the planning uh, period and um, maybe uh, when you work something like this, when you work through the collaboration, I think it's uh, the most exciting part when you start doing something concrete and, uh, and this is yet to come in our um, collaboration, in our project. So maybe taking more time, that, uh, more time in this planning part rather than um, having more time for concrete uh, realization of the project ideas. So when we feel this, when we feel something is happening, something is changing, then we, when we're actually feeling the satisfaction uh, that we are achieving something and that we are going toward our 
set a goal, our set objectives, um, etc. Uh, and also, uh, of course, it's difficult and challenging when we have the team from different continents, uh, not just uh, arranging the meetings in <laughs> right time, but also uh, arranging the meeting in person. So this is our first meeting in person, uh, which is really, really nice. And uh, I think it will be a lot, uh, it will provide us motivation to work after this even more and even better. Yeah, thank you. So I have a question for Manji. We didn't hear from you. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> What advice would you give for cross-affiliate collaboration? So why would people, why would we need to do more work together? Well, I'm, I will be like skipping the, maybe the traditional answer to this, that would be more organization or more like uh, knowing each other's roles. I, I think a good advice could be um, think of, of having a good time, <laughs> first of all, right? Like. If, if we are not, if we don't know each other and we are not having a really great time together thinking of, of new ways of, of making a better uh, movement or improving, uh, maybe what we, the result, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be like hard, no? So I think uh, a good advice is, well, of course, if you meet people at first, you won't uh, really, really know them. But take your time to, to, to know each other, to, yes, to, to know, to, to have fun, to make jokes, I don't know, to, yes, to have a great time. So, yes, basically, I'm, I'm really happy to be here, of course, also. So, big advice, <laughs> take your time to know each other in the group and really think of, of doing a great job and being happy, basically. <laughs> what, about, what about you, Lucia? What's your advice? Thank you. Um, I think my core advice for anybody setting up a collaboration of this um, size and across different affiliates would be um, to really take the time at the start, not just to get to know each other, but also to um, really set or become very, very clear on your expectations around this collaboration. So. To be honest, I think this is something that we kind of, we did along the way, but we never took the time right at the start to really define what would make this collaboration a success. What would it look like if this collaboration failed? And what are specifically our roles and responsibilities to make sure that we actually end up on the success part of this scale? Um, I think we managed well to kind of find our way but we never had this like very defined kickoff moment because I think we felt often like we were dependent on external factors that we couldn't really um, influence that were kind of making us hesitant to really um, kick off the collaboration, but we were already working together. <laughs> um, so I think it, it is worthwhile to have this kind of initial um, meeting, preferably in person. Um, I mean, we've been working together since the start of the year, and some of us just met three days ago, and I feel like I'm only just getting to know you. Um, so preferably in person, but to really make sure that you define the scope and expectations of your collaboration very, very early on. I think that would make for an even smoother process altogether. Yes. Um, actually, I think we have time also for one question from the audience. If somebody um, has something that they would like to know a little bit more about on this collaboration, please feel free to, um, I think we have microphones, um, if there's something that you would like to ask one of us panelists. Otherwise, we'll have time for this in a moment as well. Um, okay, I don't see any questions right now, um, but you'll have time to, to share those at the end. Um, with that, I'd say let us talk a little bit about the innovation or innovation ideas that we have been working on, um, which would also mean that we're, we're heading into the second um, set of slides. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Lucia, and thank you, Cicela. 
All right. Um, we went through a different process on ideation, uh, and we got a lot of ideas, actually. But we came up on the idea selection process where we ended up of uh, we ended up to selecting four idea napkins. So these are the ones that we're going to be talking in this presentation. Um, yeah. So number one, uh, we are thinking of having something like uh, Festinova or Wiki Innovation Jam, where actually these decentralized decentralized collaboration. Uh, events are leisure gatherings that bring together developers and the community members in physical meetups or virtual gatherings. Also, we think this to be like uh, events focus on idea generation, help desk support and troubleshooting, and also uh, fostering uh, collaboration and knowledge exchange between the participants. So uh, I'll be wel welcoming Angie to talk about the second napkin. Welcome. Thank you. Well, the next idea was to to create a web platform um, where different action driving challenges could be depicted um, based on uh, research and uh, that will that contain a call to action. We thought this uh, could co be called open ideas or challenge crafters or open ideas exchange. Um, but basically, our 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 idea was that that members could add. Uh, different ideas on how to talk, tackle um, um, some tasks, uh, some problems of the of the movement or, or, or their own contexts. Um, thinking on or a first sketch idea or or maybe something like more ready to scale project. Um, and very important, the participation of other members on on viewing or commenting and developing further ideas. Next one. <laughs> All right, thank you, Angie. All right, the third idea napkin that we thought, uh, we don't have the, the official name yet, but we are thinking something like Idea Factory, or Build and Test Sprint, or even uh, Idea Express, or Police Express. So it will be like a five-day workshop for developing and validating new idea on free knowledge through pr prototyping, testing, organized regularly in different regional contexts, or sometimes online. With five, uh, with fixed days and times. Also, it's something that we are thinking members of the movement can sign up individually, or as a team, which uh, with an idea for a project or tool that they want to implement. And uh, lastly, th this is something that we are imagining that um, we can have some kind of coaches, and that these coaches uh, will help the teams to clearly define the goals, uh, validate assumptions and obtain real feedback from users before even starting implementing that particular uh, project. Welcome, uh, Angie, for the fourth uh, idea napkin. Well, um, the last idea is about invest uh, an accelerator for innovations, right? A program that can provide financial aid and resources to potential innovations that are aligned with the strategic goals of the movement. So it's about a committee of, of some experts that can review proposal and select different projects with, with their own goals, you know, uh, their sustainable planes, um, plans, sorry, not planes. <laughs> um, okay, well, um, well, in a, um, the idea is that there will be also some some training, um, and that this is this is frequent also to to this. Thank you, Angie. So okay. here, uh, are you? no, the, the, we are leaving a QR code. Um, you can scan it. Uh, the the QR is going to be like zoomed in on a Padlet on a, um, a concept board, but you can zoom out and uh, leave some feedback yeah, for yeah, these yeah, ideas. Yeah. Definitely. So you have to scan this QR code and it will be leading to you to the four idea napkins that we discussed. And feel free to leave, to leave some comments and what do you think about this, what you are thinking on this cross uh, affiliate collaboration setup. Thank yes, you. And, and which one you will join also, like select some and exactly. leave a feedback like what, what would you love uh, this to have so you can join. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Lucia me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, yes, thank you for those presentations. We very much appreciate the closer. Oh, it died. Thank you. Um, 
We very much appreciate uh, all of your feedback, um, both on the ideas that we're working on, because we do want to make sure that these, of course, um, are to the benefit of the movement to all of you and your communities. Um, and we also have, uh, we're very good on time, um, which means that we have enough time also for any questions um, from you, either on the collaboration or the innovation. Ivana, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I wanted to add something about these ideas. And thank you, Anthony and Angie, for presenting them. Um, so these ideas were created uh, within our collaboration, right? Uh, and not all of these ideas are going to be prototyped, that's why we need this feedback so you can say okay this is exactly what i need so exactly what i need in my community or this is needed in the movement so basically when you see some of these ideas for example um you don't have if you have some uh, problem or some project in mind that is related to innovation you don't have to have resources you don't have to have plan but you can say okay this is my problem or uh, something I want to tackle with. Um, and for example, if we are creating this op uh, open um, AI um, ideate, yeah, right, uh, platform, uh, you can say, okay, this is my problem and I want to involve more people from the movement to solve it. So people from the movement, so uh, chapters or affiliates uh, who have the resources to um, deal with that problem or to find a solution, they can do that and they can provide you uh, with the solution. So basically, this is what I was mentioning in my presentation is that um, even though uh, we are working together, we are actually working for the needs of the movement, the needs of the chapter. And if you see some idea here that is really like catching your mind like okay this is something i want to be a part of and this is something that i need uh, actually uh, uh, great you can say okay this is my priority i want to comment on that i want to add some suggestion i want to be a part of that somehow and i want to reach out to the team members and be actually a part of that so this is why we are um encouraging you to to put some stickers, you can do this uh, by, um, you don't have to add your name if you don't want to uh, for now, or you can do it now, or you can do it later. The concept board will be open for idea gathering there. So please um, do add your suggestions, do add your, um, any kind of comment you have. So it is there for you and it is there for us as well. It will be open, so feel free to do that. And we're still waiting for questions, if you... It doesn't have to be a question or questions. Okay, yeah, we have a question, great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Geoffrey from the Wikimedia Community User Group of Uganda. So uh, really very much excited about this because um, yeah, as a user group, I haven't had any innovation projects around innovation uh, so far, so uh, we are looking to use this as a way to uh, get our members uh, to participate in innovation projects. Uh, I think my question uh, is, um, yeah, what do you think uh, are the barriers for, you know, for user groups to participate in innovation projects that you have kind of identified? Because I think it would be crucial to kind of uh, remove these barriers. I think this project is that space. Where, which can help to remove those barriers, but what are those barriers that you have identified that, um, you know, have, uh, yeah, that prevent people from participating in innovation projects that uh, this project can help to address and how can you address them? Thank you. Thank you very much. So I can, I can address that and then you can continue. Um, thank you for your question. Of course, there are, when, when we talk about innovation, we always talk about new things, about new ideas, new pro uh, project models, uh, something new we want to be a part of the movement. But when you're introducing something new to the movement, um, it can be a little, um, 
you know, you, you can have this challenge uh, describing the ideas. Why is this good? Or what are the benefits uh, of this new idea uh, for the movement? Um, so I think it will be challenging to maybe explain some of these ideas. And uh, for the user groups, um, if you're talking about from the perspective of the user groups, uh, I think mainly those are the resources. So not, we're not just talking about financial resources, we are also talking about the infrastructure, the um, time, human resources, right? So um, usually user groups are not right, developed uh, as chapters, that they cannot provide all of these things. And that's why we are um, in this idea, uh, in these ideas, we can network people from the chapters with resources and people from user groups who don't have the resources. Because um, I think the key is collaboration and we are now here not just promoting our co collaboration, so our project, but also collaboration through the movement. And I think one of the one or two ideas that we are going to prototype will cover that and will maybe uh, go over those barriers we are facing right now. Thank you, Cicela, and thank you, Geoffrey, for your question. I think, uh, anyway, introduction, uh, our close affiliate setup is basically set up uh, in the basis of uh, recommendation number 26, innovating free knowledge. And also, you know that we have done a, a research on East African Regional and Thematic Hub. And one of the questions that we asked people uh, was whether they know about the movement strategy thing. Uh, some of them, they said they never participated in any of the discussions. So you can see that there is a lack of awareness on movement strategy recommendations and initiative to some of the user groups. So this uh, causes even to not uh, be able to know what do we exactly mean by innovate in free knowledge? Because you know, innovation is a wide topic, but in the movement, what do we exactly mean by innovating free knowledge? So I think sometimes lack of awareness is the problem. Yeah. Carol? I'm just thinking, Geoffrey, thank you for your question. Um, challenges are there, and I think um, how to tackle them and is first of all starting. You have to start and come up with clear objectives. And I think um, with that, these other challenges of finance challenges, time and all that will just come later and flow. And I would say what I have learned so far is sacrifice time ac across the globe and not being, I think, scared of saying, I don't know, I need to understand. I need to learn. And yeah, that is, I think, one of the things you can use to face the challenge and also to not to be afraid to go to the bigger affiliates, like we are very small from Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania. Uh, I think we should not be scared to approach the mentors. There are so many mentors, and I think it's something that can be done to, 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 to work together and do the collaborations. Yeah. Thank you so much, Carol. So another addition point to that, uh, we have user groups that, that, that understands about the movement strategy, but always the problem is getting started. So this cross affiliate movement um, is trying to be an inspirational thing. Like uh, we get started, even though sometimes we don't understand, like the, we don't have the answers to everything, but at least let's get started with something. So maybe we can be a, a scalable thing in the future. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Cicela. Ivana. <laughs> Welcome, Lucia. Do we have more questions? Oh, I thought you want to add something. Okay. We have a question, yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's a great presentation and um, the issue of uh, collaboration that is the way to go considering the world we are in today uh, my concern is that uh, for this collaboration to thrive 
Uh, do you have a, like a strategic plan or like how long will this take? Uh, you have just mentioned that you know there are objectives and uh, what you're supposed to achieve. So do you have like a strategic plan so, so that we can see how long will this collaboration take? Thank you. I can take this one. Thank you for the question. Um, so at Wikimedia Deutschland, we're the ones that kind of initiated this um, collaboration. And we've very much set it up in phases. So ultimately, we have defined different phases of research, ideation, so generating ideas that we want to work with, prototyping these ideas, testing them in different regions, and then actually implementing, um, hopefully, some of these ideas in the long run. And um, so we have clear idea of where do we want to go, but we're, the collaboration itself, we're very much looking at in phases. Um, because we know it can evolve um, and change. Um, a big part of how we work together is being open-minded and flexible in terms of who has how many resources um, to allocate to this collaboration, how much resources can we commit at what time throughout the collaboration. So for now, we've set a time frame of, I think it's about eight months is what we roughly defined for these first phases of the collaboration and to then go into a kind of um, f feedback evaluation loop of where we then see where are we at now, how has the collaboration been working, how does it maybe need to be tweaked um, before then heading into kind of the next phase. Ultimately, if we look at what we're trying to achieve, um, this would definitely be something that would uh, require more than eight months. <laughs> Um, but we've kind of just set clear goals in terms of where do we want to be at the end of these eight months um, and continuously go into feedback loops to see are we on track. Um, I can tell you that we're not on track. <laughs> um, to be very honest, we've definitely had some setbacks um, and a lot of um, <clears throat> sorry parts of this collaboration have been taking up a lot more time than we initially thought. Um, so. The eight months is pretty, um, it's a tight schedule for us for sure, um, but um, I think we have enough flexibility to see kind of where will it take us beyond that. Um, also, maybe, I don't know, maybe others want to collaborate with us in the future as well. So I think there's always this openness to see um, how can we realign some of our um, expectations. Somebody want to add anything? I think you covered it well. <laughs> Thank you. I see another question. Yeah, just up go here. to the mic, please. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for uh, the beautiful ideas that you did display there. They are really great. So I wanted to question about the ideas. So uh, like how did you come up with these ideas? Did you do a needs assessment? Did you like involve, involve the communities so that you came with these ideas? Or I just want to learn more uh, about how you came about them. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Thank you so much for your question, Eben. Uh, this cross-affiliate uh, collaboration is basically being done uh, for the East Africa and Earth Hub. And as I said before, we did a proper research on what are the needs uh, that uh, East African Wikimedians do anticipate to be solved by a hub setup. So we are collaborating with other affiliates here, uh, and some of, some of them are leaders in their user groups. They do understand their communities better. They know their challenges. They know their problems. That's why we came together and collect uh, through the ideation process based on the problems, challenges our communities are facing. That's where we came with, uh, we had a pool of ideas and then came up to select like four ideas that we think are more doable in our community. I'd love to add to that. Um, so the based on all the research that we've done, also in um, East Africa as well as in other um, parts 
of the globe within our uh, movement, what we did, and this is um, I, this is uh, important for me to shout out to everybody who kind of has been involved in this in this process, is we actually. Um, continuously got feedback from a lot of other people throughout the movement. Um, stakeholders, people that we know are uh, working on the topic of innovation uh, or are interested in doing so, people who are very uh, much doing their own research also on what are kind of the needs um, in our movement. And we continuously got their feedback in um, and, and stayed in, in conversation. And we also organized several ideation workshops with these people from the movement from very, very different regions. I think we talked to at least 70 people across, I don't know what it was, 46 regions or something, um, to um, develop a lot of ideas that work for a lot of different contexts and regions. Um, and then applied some criteria to find out, okay, what are the ideas that make sense for us to continue working on at this time? Um, there's still, beyond the ideas that we share today, there's this huge backlog of a lot of other ideas that were presented as well. I think in total we had about 300 ideas that were shared um, and that we also all want to make accessible to everybody um, because it might well be that we can't implement all of these 300 ideas <laughs> Um, in the next few years, but maybe somebody else in the movement um, does feel like there's an idea in that, that they want to work on. So this is something that's very important to us to make all of this very, very accessible and transparent in terms of what can we work on and what maybe um, is, is up for grabs for others at this point. Yeah, I can just add just a small comment here. Um, so um we we had those stakeholders from the movement involved but also uh, within this workshop we tried to think about the needs from our parts of the world let's say so our our part of the uh, community so what would be really useful really tangible um after we um, finish the, the project uh, and it can be sustainable in the future. So it's not like we're stopping there, that's it. We're trying to create some sustainable solutions for the needs of the community. Um, and this is why the team is important because you can also see different angles um, of different communities. Yeah, and also I think what's gonna be very interesting is when we go into prototyping and testing some of these ideas is to have a bit of a check and balance as to whether our assumption is true that these ideas might actually work for several different regions or if they would need to be tweaked to function in different communities as well. I think that's gonna be a very uh, steep learning curve when we actually go into implementation. Okay, maybe we have more uh, time for one more question. We are at the end of the panel, but maybe there is more questions for the audience or not. <laughs> Hurry, we have a minute and a half. <laughs> I'll take it up, I'll take up the slot. So um, I think for me, what, what, what do you see? Like, you know, uh, if you, you know, whoever won, you know, what is happening with this? project like you know uh, if we are to Ikimania 2024 uh, just one thing that you envision happening that you share with us that yeah because of this innovation uh, project this happened like what do you, what's your vision um, like what do you want to see in, in one year from now thank you yeah I'll just quickly answer because it's very <laughs> tough question um, but I would really love to see some developed tools or projects that are um, are accepted from the community and that is really um, are, are used in the community so for a year from now so we will have this cool project or projects that that some of the affiliates accepted it used it that maybe um, it, it led to um, maybe gathering more people to collaborate um, such as this platform that I mentioned, but like more of the uh, networking and real, real joint projects of the, between the chapters and affiliates. 
I think I think our time is up. <laughs> so uh, we say thank you for finding time to come and listen to us. And we hope to talk to you in future. You're welcome to talk to us and partnerships work. Thank you so much. Thank you so, thank you so much, everyone. It's now lunchtime, and we'll see you back here at 2.15.